Look at that good boy. Look at that good alligator. What's going on guys? Just hanging out in the pond with Casper after doing uh, my underwater gator tours this morning. I figured I'd hop in here for a little bit and uh, we can talk about the big guy some. Speaking of him being a big guy, um, just a little bit about his size and his weight and whatnot. So he's a little bit under 10 feet. He's like nine foot something. He's uh, about two, 250 pounds and his age is unknown. Yeah, we don't know how old he is. There's actually no way to tell his age just by simply looking. That's why we just cut him in half and count the rings. No, nah, I'm kidding. Horrible joke. But, uh, but, but no, really though, uh, there is actually no way to tell his age unless you know when he hatched out of the egg. Their size has more to do with uh, their diet and environmental factors, not on how old they are. So, you know, he could be, I mean, really with him, he could be like 45, he could be like 75. I really have no idea. And some records in captivity claim to have alligators over a hundred years old. So they are also very long lived animals. All right. Hi, big fella. Here's the, the Casper eye view of the world. He's kind of cruising around. Jasper, my big fella. Now, when you look at his back, you can see those uh, bumps and ridges on his back right here. Each one of these is called an osteoderm, which literally means bone skin. So like you can see they wiggle in the skin right there. So it's like a, a free floating bone plate in the dermal layer. And these things act like body armor for the alligator. Okay, so uh, these are actually the bone is more dense than the rest of the skeletal structure. So like when an alligator is eaten by a python out here, and yes, that does happen, and they'll eat like a six foot alligator, and the python can digest the alligator's head, its arms, legs, all that kind of stuff. But those large uh, nuchal scutes, the osteoderms that are right at the base of the neck are the thickest, and those will actually pass through the digestive tract of the snake, right? So they can't digest that. So they'll actually have to pass that. Yeah, imagine passing that. But, uh, but anyways, that's how dense the bone is that they can't even digest that, which is pretty wild. And uh, what's really cool is that it is super, super dense bone because it evolved as a defense mechanism, as armor plating. And there's one of his girlfriends right there next to him. That's Cracker Jack, by the way. But, uh, but you gotta think that most of your skeletal structure, your endoskeleton evolves as a support system for your musculature. It's, uh, so it's there to keep you from being like a blob basically, right? Uh, but with these guys, with those osteoderms, that's not the case. Those evolved strictly for defense. So they're more dense than the rest of the regular bones. Look at him holding on to me with his hand right there. He's gonna kick off of me with his, well, oh, oh, didn't get me with the back foot though. But, um, but, but yeah, so anyways, they're more dense than the rest of the skeletal structure. And, uh, so on a large alligator, they say that they're dense enough to even stop a, a bullet actually, which is pretty crazy. Uh, now that we're going to test that theory, but, um, but yeah, it's super cool. And you got to think about it like as a relic of their time when their ancestors, you know, Casper's ancestors here literally coexisted alongside dinosaurs and had to fight dinosaurs. You know, you have to imagine ancient crocodilians evolving these osteoderms as a way to not get, you know, crushed and killed by a big old dinosaur out there. So that's why he has those things to protect him out there. Look at that. Look how cute he is. Yes. You're just a big old dinosaur, huh? You're just a big old dinosaur. Actually, they're not dinosaurs. That's another good one. We was talking about as being like a living fossil or a living dinosaur. Um, they actually are not a dinosaur themselves. They share a common ancestor with dinosaurs, uh, the archosaur, but they are not actual dinosaurs themselves. Um, the only thing we have around right now that is actually a living dinosaur are the birds. Yeah, since dinosaurs evolved into birds. So next time, uh, you know, I put up one of my videos of my backyard chickens, those are the living dinosaurs I work with, not, not this thing. Now, speaking of that, another thing a lot of people say is like, oh, well, he's just like a, it's like a big overgrown lizard, right? Well, no, he's not a lizard either. That's what's cool too. Crocodilians are not lizards. Um, he is not related to, or at least not closely related to a lizard being a crocodilian. Again, they do share that common ancestor with the dinosaurs. So he is actually more close related to a bird than he is to a lizard, which is really hard to kind of wrap your brain around, but that's kind of how that works. Pretty weird, pretty bizarre for sure. Now, anyways, while we're talking about anatomy kind of stuff, look at his, look at his little feet, right? Look at his little hands. So uh, what's cool is they have five toes in the front. Let me get his back one. And then four in the back. 
All right, so claws are only on the first three digits as well. So five toes in the front, four in the back, claws on the first three digits. These last ones uh, don't have any claws on them. And that's totally normal and natural. That's how all crocodilians are actually. And uh, why? I don't know. That's how they come out of the factory. I don't know why that is. But it is kind of cool to see and uh, kind of check out on him. Now, when he's swimming, though, you'll notice he doesn't really use his legs very much. Um, right now, he's going kind of slow. So he's kind of slowly kicking a little bit. But really, it's about that tail back there. So the tail is what he uses as his main propulsion mechanism in the water. And especially if he goes to go quickly, he'll completely tuck the legs against his body and he'll swim in a serpentine motion, kind of like how a snake does, right? And so that's what they're gonna do when they actually move quickly is rely entirely on the power generated by the tail. Jasper. Hi. As you can see, he does know his name. Comes right over. That good boy right there, huh? So he knows his name, comes when he's called. Very, very smart. It's a very clever boy. But, uh, but yeah, talking about how powerful that tail is, uh, an alligator can actually use his tail to launch itself vertically out of the water to grab a bird, all the way up to the back feet. So they can go all the way up to the back feet out of the water like that to grab a bird. That's as far as alligators go. And then uh, some crocodile species, when they're in the right size class, uh, there's some videos of this on the internet, can actually launch their entire body out of the water. Even the tail, the tip of the tail barely comes out of the water too. If they're in like this, there's kind of a sweet spot of size class where like they have just enough muscle, but just not enough weight to uh, be able to pull that off. Pretty cool. Definitely look up those videos. Some pretty cool ones on the internet showing that off. But yeah, look at him. Just swimming right here next to me, hanging out. And uh, this is also a good time to remind everybody that you can actually come and get in the water with me and Casper, come meet him and do my underwater gator tour where I actually have people in the water with uh, me and Casper. And we do some really awesome underwater photos with people too. And uh, it's really, really cool. I'll show you, I'm walking over to show you guys uh, the setup that we have. So to keep everybody nice and safe, we do have the participants are behind a net right here. So it's their safety net right there. And if you're looking at that and thinking that's, that's safety, uh, it is actually, it does work. Casper swims right into it and he hits it and he's like, nah, what is this thing? And he doesn't understand it. So uh, the safety net actually does work. And, uh, but anyways, he's over there. Let's call him over and let's give him a treat. All right, so let me go ahead. I'm gonna grab one of his little treats. So this is a gator chow biscuit made out of chicken and fish and bone and stuff, but let's call him over. Casper, come. You see him make a wake right there. So as soon as I call him, he picks up the pace, starts heading on over. Casper, come. There's a good boy. Come here. There you go. There you go. Chew that thing up some. Got a nice little, nice little hiss slash purr right there. He does that sometimes when he goes to eat. Now the, that little uh, gator chow biscuit, um, that is something I use for him as basically like a training tool. Um, that's not his main diet. His main diet is gonna be uh, different kinds of raw meat, a lot of raw chicken and whole rats. We give him a lot of those too. But I do use uh, the little biscuits. It's kind of like a training tool. It's, it's like a skittle for him, you know? It's like give him a little bit of a treat. That way you do some positive reinforcement training with him. But uh, right now he's hanging out over here with one of his lady friends. This is Cracker Jack. Come here, Cracker Jack. Why don't you come say hi too? Oh. Oh, nope, she's swimming away with me. There we go. Oh. Nope, she's not gonna let me hold on. Yeah, and she's gone. All right, well, I was trying to show you guys her a little bit. Um, since I always focus on Casper so much and we show him off the most, I want to show her, but she wasn't having it. <laughs> Casper's like, I, I love you. I'll be the star of the show. Just give me more treats. But um, yeah, that's one of the things a lot of people uh, think that Casper's the only one in the pond. That is actually never the case. Uh, he's never been the only one in here. There's always been several different alligators in here. And so that, again, that one's name is Cracker Jack. She's been in here for a couple years now. And uh, so I just like to show off that there are other alligators in here, but as you just saw, they're not quite as uh, nice and friendly as Casper is, you know? So that's why I mainly show him off. I got her down here too. I'm gonna try to bring her up again. Oh, come here. Quit fighting me. There she is. 
and she's gonna swim away again. And she's gone. <laughs> but anyways though guys hope you all enjoyed the video just kind of hanging out in the pond talking about a couple things um again if you want to come do the tour check it out on my website crocodilechris.com and i uh, hope you guys can make it out here and join and leave a comment let me know what you thought of the video and you guys have a good one I'll catch you later